on this channel, we've talked a lot about the S&P 500 as one of the most reliable investments that you can make. But what if I told you that there is an index fund out there that has actually been outperforming the S&P 500? Based on the last five years, the S&P 500 has returns of 14.62% per annum, while this index fund has annual returns of 20.07%. What is this index fund and how can you invest in it? This is what we'll look to cover in this video, so stick around and let's find out. Let's go! But before anything, if you are new to this channel, hi I'm Mark, it's nice to meet you. In this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. So while this is the first time that I'm talking about this index fund in my channel, a lot of you have probably come across this already, especially if you are watching a lot of global financial YouTubers. Today, I'm talking about the Invesco NASDAQ 100 ETF, or more popularly known as the QQQ. So the NASDAQ 100 has been popular as of late. There are actually a lot of videos out there telling you some comparisons of the S&P 500 versus the NASDAQ 100. But a lot of these videos are on a global scale. It doesn't really give us a lot of info on how we Filipinos can invest in the NASDAQ 100. So this is what I'm looking to cover in the latter part of this video. Of course, you can invest in the QQQ through many of the global trading platforms available out there. But as of late, in my recent videos, I've shared with you that the SEC, the local Philippine Securities and Exchange Commission, has been really cracking down on these global trading platforms. They are questioning its existence and threatening to shut down a lot of these apps. So it wouldn't be responsible of me to be recommending any of these apps. What I'm sharing in the latter part of the video is how you can invest in the NASDAQ 100 through local banks, through their UITF offers. So if you're already familiar with the NASDAQ 100 and you want to skip to that part, feel free to do so. But before then, let me give you a brief background about the NASDAQ 100 and how it's performing, especially versus the S&P 500. So let me just get my data. So let's look at the average annual returns of the S&P 500 versus the QQQ. In the past year, the S&P 500 has returns of 21.25%. The NASDAQ 100 has returns of 23.27%. Again, this is over a one-year timeline as of August 15th, 2024. Moving on to a three-year period, the S&P 500 has returns of 8.02%, while the NASDAQ 100 has returns of 7.59%. So based on this three-year period, you actually see that the S&P 500 is ahead by just a little bit. Moving on to five years, as shared earlier, the S&P 500's average annual return is at 14.62%. Comparatively, the QQQ stands here at 20.07%. Based on this five-year period, the QQQ is actually starting to pull away. Let's move on to the 10-year performance. Over a 10-year period, the S&P 500 has average annual returns of 12.67%, while the QQQ has this at 17.81%. For the most part, the NASDAQ 100 is actually outperforming the S&P 500. I mean, except for the last three years where the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 are actually going toe-to-toe -to -toe based on a longer period, the NASDAQ 100 is actually outperforming the S&P 500. So you might be thinking, why am I only talking about this now? I've talked a lot about the S&P 500. I've made so many videos about this. Well, the S&P 500 is still really seen as the main benchmark. It's the bellwether. It takes in the top 500 US corporations across many different sectors. So it's really seen as the index that's really representing the stock market as a whole. The NASDAQ index is actually heavily reliant on the tech sector. So while the S&P 500 really cuts across many different industries, the NASDAQ 100, while also covering different sectors and categories, is really more tech-heavy and does not include the financial sector. It's a bit more niche. It's not as maybe safe, if you want to put it that way. But as the global economy is so reliant on the tech sector anyway in these last few decades, this has really caused the NASDAQ 100 to be outperforming the S&P 500. So let me just get you the portfolio or the different stocks that are comprising the NASDAQ 100. So this is just a quick snapshot. Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, 
meta platforms. I guess these all sound very familiar to you. These are the usual suspects. The S&P 500 also has this in its portfolio, but the main difference would be a larger weight, a higher concentration of the percentage of the Nasdaq 100 that would go to these tech companies. So for comparison, in the S&P 500, Apple comprises about 6.94% of the portfolio, while in the Nasdaq 100, Apple comprises 9.14%. So this is what I mean by the larger concentration that the NASDAQ 100 puts into these companies. And this is what I mentioned about the NASDAQ 100 as really being more niche, being more focused on the tech sector. So the S&P 500, again, is sort of a safer bet covering different industries in the way that the NASDAQ 100 doesn't have the finance industry in the S&P 500. The finance sector actually comprises a large portion of the entire portfolio. So these are the few things that differentiate the S&P 500 from the Nasdaq 100. And I guess one more thing that you have to factor in would be that the Nasdaq 100 was actually just launched in 1985. So in terms of historical data, we can't really go back that far versus the S&P 500 which has been around since 1957, you have more data to look back on in the S&P 500, while the Nasdaq 100, again, is just about to turn 40 next year. So I guess that's one thing that you may want to factor in if you want to invest in the Nasdaq 100. So let's now move on to how you can invest in this fund. So for the S&P 500, since it's been around longer, it's more popular, you have many banks to choose from in terms of the UITF offerings. In the past, I've talked about BDO, Metro Bank, RCBC, East West Bank, and BPI. For the longest time, I was investing via BPI UITF. It had its per annum trust fee at 0.75%. Earlier this year, they doubled this to 1.5%. So I saw myself moving my future investments in the S&P 500 to East West Bank instead where the per annum trust fees is just at 0.5%. For the Invesco, NASDAQ 100, or the QQQ, there's actually just one bank that's offering this as a UITF. It's also a fairly new UITF that was just launched in 2022. So the Invesco NASDAQ 100 ETF is being offered by Security Bank through its US Technology Equity Index Feeder Fund. Now to be able to invest in this fund, you need to open a US dollar savings account with Security Bank. The minimum amount to start investing in this fund starts at $1,000. And each time that you would want to top up and continue investing in this fund, you would need subsequent investments of $500. So the amounts needed to start and to continue investing in this fund are actually quite high. So it's not as easy and as low as the S&P 500 fund that I've talked about before. You'd be glad to know though that the trust fee of Security Bank is only at 0.7% per annum. I guess one of the challenges in investing in this fund is when you open your US dollar savings account with Security Bank, you actually have to maintain $500 in your savings account. So you can only invest in this fund once you've put in a total of $1,500. Again, you would need to maintain $500 in the savings account after which you can invest $1,000 into the Security Bank US Technology Equity Index Feeder Fund. So will I be investing in this fund? Um, not just yet. Um, as you know, I just got started investing in East West Bank. So with East West Bank, the minimum amount to keep in my US dollar savings account is actually lower at $200. And to get started in the investment fund, it was at $500. So again, I have $200 that will be just sitting there that I can't touch because I will be charged for not maintaining the average daily balance. You know, right now, I just can't afford to put in another $500 into Security Bank that I can't touch. Perhaps in the future, I am hoping that Security Bank actually lowers their minimums. And putting it out there for the other banks, maybe you can also come up with a better offer than Security Bank. We want to be able to invest in the Invesco NASDAQ 100 ETF. We want QQQ. So if you're watching this from any of the other banks, um, please do so. Please offer the NASDAQ 100 ETF as a UITF and offer lower minimums. And hopefully they don't have high trust fees. Hopefully East West Bank or even BPI since I already have US dollar savings account, 
with these banks, it would be easier for me to get started on investing in the QQQ. But for the meantime, I'll just sit back and not yet enter this. Perhaps I can prepare for it in the future. Anyway, local and global stocks are at an all-time high right now. It's not really a time to be aggressively buying. Right now, looking for dips, looking for some market pullback before I continue my investments in the global markets. So what do you think of the NASDAQ 100? Do you want to invest in this through Security Bank? Let me know in the comment section. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing!